Hello, my name is Sandra Timko and welcome to Lumen Christi. First Thessalonians 5 verses 2 and 3 reminds us, for you yourself know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will <clears throat> not escape. In some situations in life, there simply is no turning back. Can we ever make a difference and help change things? Yes, we can. Can we help change the judging hand of God like Abraham did when he interceded for Lot at Sodom and Gomorrah? We can, but maybe we would pray a little harder and fast a little longer if we only knew, really recognized the horror that truly awaits a sinful civilization and the judgment she rightly deserves. With us today is the Lord's little soldier, Carol Amici. Carol has been with us three times to share the wonderful mercy the Lord wants to offer us before it's too late. If we would just relinquish our stony hearts and receive his mercy. My sisters and brothers, my friend in Christ Jesus, Carol Amici. Welcome, Carol. Hello, Sandy. Thank it's you. Good to see you again. It's great to be here. Thank you. I understand that you have been out and about um, traveling with some other of God's chosen prophets, heralding in a darkened world that it's time to repent and change. And you happen to be in our area, so we snagged you so that you could share with our viewing audience about the wonderful way the Lord's speaking through you. But before you share, it's very imperative that people that do not recognize you understand that we are not talking about um, a psychic gift. We are talking about a bona fide manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Lord handpicking and choosing willing servants to be his prophet. Now you have a level of accountability by having a spiritual director, true? Yes. And you are um, an avid, a very avid member of a, a Catholic community. Indeed. And you were an active member um, of a prayer group for years and years and years. I have been. Until in most recent years, the Lord raised you up to do this bidding. Well, he woke me up. He woke you up. He did that. Okay. Right in the middle of the night, I heard very clearly someone say to me, uh, and it was a male voice, I wish to speak to you. And immediately I did know it was our Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, and uh, that first night he said, uh, I'm asking you to become a messenger to the world uh, for our messages that we wish to give you for the world uh, and uh, to be uh, one who would uh, travel, uh, who would speak about my father's plan to give the gift of salvation to everyone in the world who will accept it. And that's where the mercy comes in. Uh, Jesus and uh, the Father have said to my heart, uh, you will only find salvation immersed in my mercy. So that's how important that makes it. What an appropriate message for these sinful times because so many people, now some may say, how can you say that? It's generally fear or pride that keeps people from receiving his mercy. But sometimes it's just flat out um, apathy. Maybe they think they're too far gone. Maybe they think that um, the Lord's really not there. So you have some wonderful messages for us today, um, sharing his mercy and sharing some of the plight that we're going to find because we do have to make recompense for the sins of a society, not just our own, but for our hand in helping mold the society. So tell us what you've got. Well, uh, the understanding that we have a merciful God is where we begin. Uh, our worldview of mercy is that we set each other up and let each other down, and so we think God's going to do that for us also. Uh, God knows every word we say and every thought we have and all of our responses. He knows our heart, and that's the most important thing. Uh, we might see someone and say, oh, well, God, why did God particularly pick that person. And he says he has chosen all of us since before we were born and given us gifts uh, to help us through this very special end times as heaven itself is referring to. Uh, and that if we trust him uh, and we know he's God and there's nothing that is impossible to God, uh, we don't have to worry. And in fact, he's begging us not to worry. Uh, he knows how different we are. He knows the, whether we are ice cold uh, or atheistic or 
uh, lukewarm or fiery for God. Mm -hmm. And he knows just exactly how to get our attention. Uh, he knows what to do, uh, how to keep us where we are. In fact, Jesus has said, remember, you are exactly where my Father wants you to be in your conversion, because we do get impatient. And half the time we spend in our prayer is uh, asking him to make us better and different and what we think should happen. That's, uh, that's really interesting because when you stop and think that most of us are praying for other people to convert, now you have to stop and wonder, are they praying or are we praying for people to convert because it'll make our life easier? Okay, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or do we really want them to have a radical share of the joy of knowing Christ? Mm -hmm. Because if we're praying that our life would be easier because of their conversion, then once again, that's a barometer of where we're really at mm -hmm. in His love and in His mercy. Mm -hmm. So really, what this is about, to receive His mercy, we have to be humble. Absolutely. And Jesus explained recently that in our conversion, much of the time is spent unlearning before we can learn. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense to you right away because yes. you've been through that. Yes. Uh, and we have ideas about the way things should be and the way God should speak and act. Uh, and when that doesn't happen, uh, we, we go off in another direction again. Mm -hmm. uh, so surrender is a word that Jesus and Mary use often. Uh, and that turns out to mean a lot of things. But of course, it means, again, let go. Let God do this. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear uh, Marino after a while. And uh, he has a wonderful phrase where he says, let God plan your day from the first minute of it. Absolutely. Uh, let God make your day. Mm -hmm. And we all love that one. Mm -hmm. you know? it, it's truly an adventure in Christ <clears throat> when we start the day and ask him to just direct us through. Yes. We have no... Um, aspirations, we just lay it all at the foot of the cross. Um, I want to ask you, just so that people that are coming to places of conversion or um, they're currently on fire and they, they want to do the will of the Father, but they haven't yet experienced the big P. They haven't yet experienced persecution, okay? People in the um, stations of the prophetic, surely, are ridiculed and um, receive an awful lot of persecution, um, are watched closely to make sure that their words and their walk are lining up. Tell us a little bit about the reality of what I'm saying. Well, the reality seems to me to be uh, about another P, uh, and that's purification, mm -hmm. and that we're all being ridiculed. We're all being isolated by our families and rejected. Uh, and humiliated uh, because Jesus was, mm -hmm. because Mary, his mother, was. Mm -hmm. And we've learned a lot about that that I think we didn't realize how the neighbors made fun of her and her crazy son. Well, um, I know that my children uh, are scared to death because of their crazy mother. And. Um, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> yes. That one from my sons and their friends a few times. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we can really rejoice whatever is happening. Uh, Jesus says no matter how things look bleak or impossible to overcome, rejoice and praise my Father because you're right on the money and you don't know how he's going to pull this off and he's going to. Mm -hmm. uh, so relax and trust, trust, trust and rejoice and enjoy. Mm -hmm. I think people forget that Christ already sees the end of the saga. Right. You know, people waste an awful lot of time um, forgetting that Blessed Mother has made it clear, live in the moment. Yes. You're wasting time and energy getting ahead because it may not turn out the way that you had expected. Right. It will always turn out better than if you oh, entrust indeed. it to Christ. So read us a little something, Carol. All right, and you mentioned a, uh, an important word uh, in the lead-in when you said repent mm -hmm. because uh, Jesus starts this message out that I did receive just this morning. I am your Lord and your God, your Jesus of mercy, your Eucharistic Savior. I call out to the people of the world to repent of their sinful ways. 
Give time to the preparation before seeking reconciliation. Be rested and alert as you reflect through the power of our spirit all you will wish to bring for healing and forgiveness. Your unconfessed sins and the possessions you cling to are your greatest burden. Do not let worry be a distraction. Do not ever, ever again speak or act in anger. Do not ever speak or act in a haughty, selfish manner or with expectation of recognition or places of honor. Seek the hidden path to my cross. Be a simple and humble servant who gives public thanks to all the gifts of my Father. When your response to any event is praise to the Father for his wisdom and perfect will on your behalf, you are returning mercy to him and will proceed in a deeper understanding of his will and graciousness and perfect care for you. In this way, peace will be maintained and without your entire being and demeanor, within and without your entire being and demeanor. There is nothing and no one who will overcome you. And that is so important because we get so nervous and so worried and anxious. And our anxiety often rests on ourselves. Let's take a moment here. That's a perfect place to stop and reintroduce our guest, Carol Amici. Jesus has named you his little soldier. Carol is from Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, fourth time here on Lumen Christi. I think she's holding the record along with John Leary, who will be um, sharing with you in the next segment of Lumen Christi. Um, Carol is a chosen mouthpiece for the Lord, heralding a word of repentance and change, much like John the Baptist did in days of old. Um, times really haven't changed that much. The reality is it's a dark and sinful place. and um, the signs of the time are telling us that if we haven't surrendered, now is definitely the time. You agree? Yes. Has the Lord um, grieved the state of his children's souls? He has, and he speaks often about how in their statues and uh, images, uh, Mary, his mother, and himself, uh, they weep either tears or tears of oil or tears of blood to let us know how much they are suffering over the state of the world. And that phenomena we are seeing in the news often. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Medjugorje recently, and the day before we left, the knee of an enormous, uh, very um, abstract of the crucified Christ, which is also the resurrection. There's no cross behind this massive, just incredible piece. But his knee was, was um, dripping. and. Um, it made you, it, for me, what it was saying is we should be on our knees mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. We really need to be on our knees. It's all about humility. And it's all about prayer. Mm -hmm. If we have learned anything, I believe we have learned the power of prayer. In many things the Father asked us to pray about to mitigate, and we did, and He did. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus says, my Father waits to act in response to your prayer. Would you say, from the messages that you've received, there was a direct correlation with um, the fact that on 9-11, some of the planes that were heading towards the White House and were deterred, um, that this was, uh, that the damage could have been much, much more severe had um, the prayers that went up for some time and the fasting for protection for our country, that this kicked in, so to speak. And Jesus speaks Yes, Thank you. <laughs> of, um, of uh, victim souls who offer themselves to suffer in uh, silence and hidden mm -hmm. from the eyes of maybe even their families. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of the reasons we can be rejoicing and thanking the Father because he has, of course, thought of everything. And we can also rejoice because he encourages us every chance he gets. Here he says, my people, you are fighting, seasoned, and readied. Mighty, humble, holy warriors, rejoice. The immediate days of your future will be filled with chaos and storms of a destructive force and the need to help each other and share your supplies and for 
years he has been asking us to gather water right. and supplies, not to hoard, but for the people who will be in need. Mm -hmm. Prepare. Recheck your supply of water and means of purifying it, which would be bleach. The agents of the Antichrist will seek to test their ability to control and cause weather extremes and storms of unprecedented ferocity. Now I have to stop you for a moment. You're talking about a human hand being driven by uh, the power of darkness that will alter the weather. And has already. Okay. People don't understand that there is the technology available to actually alter the weather. Okay. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Go ahead. One of the reasons, um, as explained by heaven, that we are being given these messages is that so we will be aware of things going on that we would never learn or know about if had, heaven hadn't uh, alerted us. Mm -hmm. And this certainly is one of them. Uh, and uh, Our Lady has said often, they, the one world, the new world order people, mm -hmm. uh, who are uh, enabling Satan's plan for a world takeover, um, uh, are really and truly uh, way ahead of what we're told. Mm -hmm. and, and the media is absolutely mum about things that are going on. And here it's talking about earthquakes will escalate in number and degree of violence. There have been at least 10 earthquakes in Japan in the last week. Interesting. Large. Interesting, because uh, two weeks ago when the was on the radio, 8.1. 8.1 hit, I was amazed at how few people even heard that reported. It was a mere blurb, and that was it. Yep. It's almost as if they're aware that these things have begun, and they don't want to cause anybody to maybe turn towards Christ Correct. at this moment of dire need. Yes, yes. 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 So this, this really makes perfect sense then for the people who have felt that they would be foolish starting to stack away some emergency needs. Right. It's time, people. It's time. And don't worry about looking foolish because a very popular notion has been with heaven forever to be a fool for Christ. Absolutely. And here's our opportunity. Except that uh, there will be very soon people coming to our doorstep in dire need, in great remorse for sins that they have seen in what we have spoken about before, the warning or the illumination of our minds to the state of our souls. A huge gift from God the Father, never given before, never will it be given again. Um, and Jesus says about this, people will literally in the earthquakes be shaken from their complacency in every corner of the world. Mm -hmm. Pray for them from now on. And he's giving us uh, hints and clues on who to pray for and what to do, uh, to pray for the people that the Holy Spirit will send to us, uh, whom we have never seen before, but to begin praying for them now, to prepare them for this time, to uh, enable them to be open to the gifts the Spirit wishes to give them. Now, if memory serves me right, one thing that you said that sent some shock waves last time you were here, which I think was just awesome, um, you said that in these end times, when some of these people that have spent years away from the Lord or in a constant ridicule of the people who have tried to be faithful, you said they're going to show up at our doors and you will need to receive them with open arms. You will need not to call up the past, but rejoice with them that they've come to this place. Absolutely. Now, for some people, that's a real scary thought. Even though they've been sending up the prayers for their conversion, to be confronted with them face to face mm -hmm. is a little bit um, over the top. But we know that it'll be a beautiful unification in Christ. True? Yes, and Jesus says, this is true, whatever it is that he has said, because I have said it. And, and I love that. Yeah, and that's, that's perfect. enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's it. Um, you have compiled the messages uh, in a couple volumes. Yes, and I have. And tell us the names of those books and how they can be gotten. All right. As the first book is, is the first book is named "As We Wait in Joyful Hope," which is what we are invited to do mm -hmm. for the return of Jesus, mm -hmm. for the world to be purified, and uh, for the world to go into a new era of peace and purity. So there is much ahead of us and much about which to rejoice. Uh, the second book is called Do Whatever Love Requires. The third book is Bands, 
of love because in Hosea, Yahweh uh, announced, as he is announcing today, I am tying my people together with bands of love. And that's exactly what he's doing now, mm -hmm. uh, showing us how we truly belong to each other and are bonded through prayer for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the book that will be coming out very shortly through Queenship Publishing is called uh, Mercy, God's Never-Ending Promise. Beautiful. Thank and you. And they can get it through Queenship, Queenship Publishing. Publishing. Um, An 800 number, 1-800-647-9882. Okay. You know, something went through my mind when you mentioned that the first book and the second. I thought, think of the people that had never considered jumping on board at this time, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, oh my goodness, what have I missed? Do I need to go back and read the first volume? Absolutely. You think? Mm -hmm. That's a good you idea. Think? Yeah. And uh, I, I know it is because the very first messages we're talking about right now. Okay, so this is kind of, a, um, this is in. Infinite timing. That's right. It's God's time, okay. not ours, because we are chomping at the bit saying, will you please get going, Lord, because we are waiting and going crazy. And he says, yes, I know that's part of my plan, too, because waiting purifies you and gives you the gift of patience, which you will need uh, for a long time to come. Now, that's a little scary because there are people that were once the remnant who have wandered because they think, you know what, this thing's never going to unfold. And I'm seeing my brothers and sisters who are living just fine, doing all these sinful things, okay? But we got to remember that scripture, what does it profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul in the process? So we have to remain fervent and not look to the left or the right, but to keep our eyes solely on Christ and trust in how Trust. he is uh, using people to be his mouthpiece. And as we watch people walk away, uh, to remain encouraged and full of fire and energy, uh, because we are the remnant, mm -hmm. the chosen people. The invitation was for everyone. Uh, but as always has happened throughout history, God doesn't work in a different way, in different ages. It's always the same. Uh, we are a remnant people, and a remnant is a very small piece that holds the whole cloth together. And that's exactly why so much prayer is needed. And as more fall away or become discouraged or bored, uh, we're asked to pray even more. Uh, and the, uh, the beauty of praying more is that it's changing us. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Yes, yes. Give us a little bit of, a little morsel here. All right. Pray for them from now on that they will accept the gift of wisdom mm -hmm. and understanding, these people who come to us, that all of these events are signs of Scripture fulfilled, all of the things we're going to go through in the future, which are going to be rough. We're going to see frightening things, and God repeats and repeats, but do not be afraid because I am promising to protect you, to protect my dear ones. Mm -hmm. And you are a dear, dear one. Oh, thank you. You know, I think all of his children of are, course. are dear, dear ones. And since we're all his children, we're all just at different places of surrender. Um, we, that, you know, that's so important to remember that he's no respecter of persons. So he loves the sinner, since we're all sinners. The, the degree of sin is really relative because um, it's all offensive to him. There's a scripture that says the greatest, our greatest acts are like filthy rags before him. The, the reality is we are all sinners. And the person that you may be lifting up the most that you think, oh, terrible sinner, the reality is sin is sin. Mm -hmm. It's all offensive to the Father. And may I say that Jesus' favorite line of my own is my Father and I wish to forgive you long after it makes any sense at all. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's comforting, isn't Hooray. it? Yes. Give us a little bit more. we got a few minutes All here. All right. You are entering a period of time marked by destructive events to fulfill Scripture mm -hmm. that will be above and outside any, exp any ever experienced in the world since history has been recorded. Floods and winds will devastate and destroy vast areas of land without the tr time or opportunity to recover and rebuild. 
All I have told you for so many years through this messenger is about to be fulfilled. Pray for all my chosen ones, the poor and the little ones, who have for so many years left home and family for your sake. The attacks of violence increase, and dangers to their persons lie in wait at every turn. This time of the violence of nature will continue to escalate. Contain the warning and continue beyond into the brief period in which you will bring many, many lost ones into your homes and hearts, but will then be tempered by the outpouring of the Spirit that results in the greatest number of people accepting my mercy and conversion in the history of mankind. And we must remember, this just nails it all. The fact is, if it's written, it will come exactly. to pass. Carol, before we leave, real quick, um, give that number for Queenship once more. All right, 1-800-647-9882. And if you would just be so kind to drive home the importance very quickly of um, storing that water. Of, above anything, Jesus says, be sure you have plenty of water. He also promises, because we would never really have enough to last for the number of people who will come to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, that he will multiply our supplies and our water that's kind of an ace in the hole as far as I'm concerned. Carol, you're an ace in the hole for all of us, yes. getting us prepared for what lies ahead with Thank joy. You. Yes. Thank you so much. You're so Thank welcome. You. God bless you. Thank you. And if everybody would keep Carol and her ministry as she travels and her writing uh, protected in prayer. Just a, a little nugget of wisdom here before we go. Um, maybe, just maybe, if we became a little less arrogant and embrace gratitude and humility, remembering that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away whatever he wants, we would be wise to give back to him. Brothers and sisters, tuck this one from Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9 in your heart to help keep a balanced perspective. Finally, brethren, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is an excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And as always, remember to let Christ's light shine through you.